Hi all, so today we are going to discuss in detail about minor connectors. Moving to the contents, it includes introduction, definition, functions of minor connector, basic principles of design of a minor connector, different types of minor connectors, tissue stops and finish lines, summary and conclusion. Moving to the introduction, minor connectors can be defined as the connecting link between the manager connector or base of a removed partial danger to other units of a process such as clasp assembly, indirect retainers, occlusal or cingulum breast, etc. So this is the definition according to GPT-9. So it is basically a connecting link between the major connector to all other components of the RPD. So this is the Minor, this is the major connector and this is the minor connector which connects the ma major connector to the other parts of other components of the RPD. Moving to the functions of a minor connector, the primary function of a ma minor connector is to join the remaining components of RPD to the major connector and is also used for the distribution of applied forces to the supporting tissue and oral tissues. Supporting teeth and oral tissues. So, and in also to transfer the functional stress to the abutment tooth, that is the process's abutment function, as well as to transfer the effect of retainers, rest, and stabilizing components to the rest of the uh, danger, that is the abutment to process's function. So moving to the principles of design of a minor connector. So there are basically four main principles. First one, it should have sufficient bulk to be rigid. Second one, it should be thickest towards the lingual surface, tapering towards the contact area. And third one, it should form a right angle with the major connector so that the gingival crossing is abrupt and cover as little gingival tissue as possible. Fourth one, sharp angle should be avoided and spaces should not exist for trapping of food debris that is uh, the sharp angle should be avoided and there should not be any space uh, between the major connector or any other components of the RPD as it may cause trapping of food debris. Moving to the different types of minor connectors so there are basically four types of minor connectors first one to join the clasp assembly to the major connector second one to join the indirect retainers and auxiliary rest to the major connector third one to join the danger base to the major connector and fourth one uh, the minor connector which serve as an approach arm for a vertical projection or a part type of clasp so these are the four types once again, that is uh, the first type of minor connector is to join the clasp assembly to the major connector. So here this is the minor connector which joins the clasp assembly to the major connector. And second one, it acts as a, uh, we join the indirect retainer and auxiliary rest to the major connector. So in this, this is the direct retainer and this is the indirect retainer. So the indirect retainer, it, it, uh, the minor connector helps to join the indirect retainer uh, to the major connector and third one to join the danger base to the major connector so here so here this is the minor connector and it helps to join the danger base to the major connector and the fourth one this is the approach arm uh, which serves as an approach arm for the vertical projection or bar type of clasp so in this this is the minor connector so there are four types first one is for to join the clasp assembly second one is to join the indirect retainers uh, to the major connector third one to join the danger base to the major connector and fourth one which serves as an approach arm for the vertical projection or bar type of clasp so moving to the first step that is the minor connectors joining the clasp assembly to the major connector. So this is the minor connector which is joining the clasp assembly to the major connector. So minor connectors that join the clasp assemblies to the major connector must be rigid because they support the active components of the RPD. The active components of the RPD are nothing but the written day clasp and also support the rest and it prevents the uh, movement of the processes towards the underlying tissues. Uh, in addition, the connector should be tapered to the tooth below the origin of the clasp arm. If no clasp arm is formed when a bar clasp originates elsewhere, the connector should be tapered to a knife edge to the full length of the buckled surface. Most minor connectors that support the clasp assemblies are located on the proximal surface of the tooth adjacent to the edangulous areas. And in many instances, the clasp assembly must be positioned on a tooth that is not ad adjacent to an edangulous 
space. And in cases where the class assemblies are located on proximal surface of the tooth adjacent to the edentulous areas, the minor connectors should be broad, buccolingually, but thin, mesiodistally. And also, the minor connector should be positioned in the associated lingual embrasure. When an artificial tooth is to be placed, the, the thickest portion should be at the lingual line angle of the abutment tooth and this way the bulk is ensured with the least indifference to the placement of the artificial tooth. If the clasp assembly is not being placed on a tooth adjacent to the edentula space, the minor connector must be positioned in the embrasure between the two teeth. And moving to the extension of, uh, of the uh, minor connector, the Minor connector in the maxillary arch, it should in case of distal extension cases, it should cover the entire ridge. That is, it should cover the entire redentulous ridge including the maxillary tuberosity. Whereas in case of mandibular arch, when in distal extension cases, uh, only the two-third of the length of the redentulous arch is covered by the minor connector. So this is about the extension of the minor connector. That is in case of maxillary arch, the entire ridge including the maxillary tuberosity should be covered. Whereas in case of mandibular arch, though it is covering the entire retromolar pad, only the two-third of the length of the entire edentulous arch is covered. Moving to the next type is the minor connectors that join the indirect retainers or auxiliary rest to the maxillary uh, or to the major connector. So in this type, see so this is the second type in here, this is the indirect retainer which is connecting to the major connector by a minor connector and there are two important features in this type the first one that it should form a right angle with the major connector so the indirect retainer uh, should form a right angle to the major connector and second point is that it should lie in embrasure between the teeth to diffuse its bulk as much as possible so these are the two important features Next is the th third type that is a minor connector that joins the denser base to the major connector. Uh, based on this type, it has three main features. The first one is the rigidity, and second one, it should it should uh, it should be rigid enough to resist the uh, fracture, and third one, it should support the uh, underlying tissues. And based on that, it has three types: the lattice for construction, mesh construction, bead or nail head minor connector. First one is the open lattice construction. Open lattice construction basically it consists of two types of struts. The first one is the longitudinal struts and second one is the transverse strut. Which is crossing the ridges is basically the transverse struts and which, which passes parallel to the ridges is the longitudinal strut. So it has basically two longitudinal struts and more number of transverse struts. So, uh, uh, the arrangement of both the longitudinal and transfer strut gives a ladder like network and also the, uh, the position of the longitudinal and transfer strut is a crucial factor for the open lattice work construction. And in case of mandibular arch, uh, in case of mandibular arch, the longitudinal strut should pass uh, either buckle to the crust of the ridge or lingual to the crust of the ridge and whereas the transverse uh, strut should pass across the ridge and uh, the position of the neck of the artificial teeth should lie on the transverse strut. So these are the more important points of the lattice work construction and in addition to that the relief can be provided uh, in case of open lattice work construction. So moving to the advantages, it provides the strongest attachment of the acrylic resin danger base to the removal partial danger and it is the easiest to realign if necessary because of the ridge resorption. So this is the second point. 
uh, so it is a most strongest attachment of the acrylic resin denture base with that of the uh, removal partial denture when compared to the other two types of construction this is the best construction and another advantage is that it facilitates the relining and rebasing process so the next type is the mesh construction a mesh minor connector may be com compared to a rigid metallic screen and the mesh construction can be uh, named because of its arrangement so it has small channels or holes uh, through which the acrylic resin can flow or penetrate so this uh, channels are passed through the connector are intended to permit the acrylic resin to penetrate and this allows the resin to encircle uh, uh, the resin encirclement of the um, minor connector and the mechanical retention of the denture base can be achieved by this type so these are the main type uh, this is the main advantage of the mesh construction uh, because of the small holes the acrylic resins are allowed to pass through it and so the uh, resin encirclement and as well as the mechanical retention of the denture base can be provided and the main drawback of the mesh construction is that it is difficult to pack the acrylic resin at the dow stage because more pressure is needed against the resin to force uh, force it through the uh, small holes and it may also result in inadequate resin penetration uh, uh, that is uh, due to the insufficient packing pressure it may result in inadequate resin penetration and weak attachment to the framework mesh construction may also interfere with the arrangement of the prosthetic teeth and it does not provide a strong as attachment for the acrylic resin denture base as compared to the lattice framework and mesh construction may be used whenever the multiple teeth are to be replaced so both in case of open lattice work uh, construction as well as mesh construction uh, when they whenever there are multiple teeth to be replaced both the types can be used and in addition relief is provided beneath the minor connectors for both open construction as well as mesh construction and this relief provides a space between the minor connector and the underlying master cast or residual ridge so this uh, this space permit the resin uh, the acrylic resin to encircle the minor connector and provides a mechanism for attachment of the denture base to the framework so these are the main advantages and disadvantages of mesh construction uh, advantages is that more resin encirclement and mechanical retention is provided uh, as well as it has small holes so through which the acrylic resin can flow and disadvantages include it is difficult to pack because uh, to pack the acrylic resin at dow stage is more difficult and more pressure should be needed and it is not a uh, strong attachment uh, to the uh, denture base and uh, it can be used in case of multiple tooth to be replaced so moving to the third type this is the bead wire or nail head retention minor connector it is named so because of its appearance so it has either uh, the beads different types of beads uh, on uh, on the minor connector or it has a nail head appearance uh, so based on it uh, it is named so and it is used with a metal denture base which is cast to fit directly against the edentulous ridge so they are most commonly used and these projections may be created by placing resin beads on the appropriate segments of the wax pattern and investing it and later casting it and the primary advantage of a metal base is related to improved hygiene so when compared to open open lattice work construction and mesh construction this is the most hygienic type of minor connector and it has enhanced thermal stimulation disadvantages it is difficult uh, difficulty in adjusting and relining the cast metal bases so the it is very difficult to reline this bead wire or nail head uh, uh, type construction and also the attachment of resin is relatively weak so in case of both mesh construction and bead wire or nail head construction the attachment is weak only in case of open lattice work construction the attachment is good or strongest and uh, the bead wire construction is limited to short span rpds and only in tooth supported applications or the patients with well 
heeled ridges uh, the bead wire or nail head a uh, minor type of minor connector is used it is indicated when inrad space is limited and acrylic resin by itself would not have sufficient strength to withstand the force of occlusion the retention of the acrylic resin is obtained by projection of metal on its surface and these projections may be in the form of beads wires or nail heads and this is the most hygienic type of minor connector and shortcomings difficulty to adjust the metal base cannot be adequately realigned in case of ridge resorption and it is the most weakest attachment of acrylic resin to denser base so next is the tissue stops so tissue stops or cast stops they are used on all distal extension partial lenses using lattice work or mesh retention as we have already discussed in both open lattice work construction and uh, mesh construction the relief is provided and um, uh, when the relief is provided and in case of distal extension cases the use of relief produces a minor connector that is supported only at one end so in distal extension cases the minor connector is solely supported at one end that it has only one abutment so abutment two so it is solely supported at one end as a result the minor connector may bend when the load is applied since a considerable force is applied during a packing and uh, loading uh, and processing of the acrylic resin the probability of bending is increased so in order to prevent the bending of the uh, in order to prevent the bending uh, this uh, cast stops are are uh, used and cast stops are nothing but a small area at the free end of the minor connector that is here at the free end of the minor connector a small area uh, of uh, at the end of the minor connector should contact the master cast so this portion of the minor connector is termed is termed as cast top a cast top is created by removing a small square of a small square area of relief wax where the posterior strut of the minor connector crosses the center of the ridge so the relief wax which is removed is of 2 into 2 mm and this depression is incorporated into the refractory cast and during the wax waxing process this depression is filled with wax and later casting is done so this is the cast stop or tissue stop and this uh, cast stop or tissue stop provide uh, support and it prevents the bending of the framework uh, it is so it is used so this is the advantage of cast stop and it is only used in case of distal extension cases so finishing the tissue stop this is uh, this is how the it should be so this is the cast stop and this is the minor connector and so this prevents the bending of the framework so moving to the finish lines so in order to provide sufficient bulk of acrylic resin to produce a smooth and even joint with the metal framework finish lines are used and the provision must be made to produce space for a butt joint so that acrylic resin can be finished evenly with the major connector so uh, for metal based minor connectors acrylic resin is processed only on the external surface therefore uh, the resin metal joints should be created only at the external surfaces and this indifferences so there is a ma there is an interface between the acrylic face and the metal face and this forms the finish line and based on the type of finish lines there are two types one is the external finish line and another is the internal finish line and uh, external finish lines are nothing but if they are located on the outer surface of the major connectors if they are located on the external surface or the outer surface of the major connector they are called external finish line and if they are positioned on the inner or tissue surface then they are termed as internal finish lines and if that uh, if the finish lines are located on the inner or tissue surface of the major connector then they are called internal finish lines so those are the two types of finish lines external finish line and internal finish line so this is the uh, this is how the internal finish line is done so based on the relief wax as the relief wax is present 
the internal finish lines are formed as a result of relief wax placed on the edentulous ridge of a master cast prior to duplication. The relief wax create elevated area on the resultant refractory cast and this elevation is necessary to create space for the acrylic resin beneath uh, the open and mesh connectors so this is the relief wax and after duplication this relief wax will provide space for the acrylic resin to flow in both uh, open lattice construction and me mesh construction uh, so in both the cases internal finish line is formed and the margins of the relief wax establish internal finish line in the completed metal framework. So this margin forms the internal finish line. And uh, the margins of the relief wax should be sharp and well defined. So next is the external finish line. The external finish line must also be uh, sharp and should be slightly undercut to help to lock the acrylic resin. So external finish line as we already told it is seen on the external surface of the major connector. On the external surface of the major connector. So it should not be uh, so smooth so that uh, the acrylic resin has to be get locked to it. And an external finish line is formed by the placement and carving of wax during framework fabrication. And they originate at the lingual extent of the receipt and continue down to the lingual aspect of the minor connector. So basically the external line finish line it forms uh, lingual to the uh, lingual extent of the receipt and continue to the lingual aspect of the minor connector. It should be well defined and the contour of the fin external finish line should be consistent with the contours of the major connector. So this is the uh, minor connector for a bar type retainer. So here this is the finish line which forms and uh, for a bar type retainer. And the last type of minor connector is that the minor connector that serves as an approach jam for the vertical projection or bar, or bar type of clasp. In all other uh, components or all other types, uh, they help the minor connectors used to join those parts, those components to the major connector. Whereas the fourth type, the minor connector itself is acting as an approach jam for the vertical projection or of bar type clasp. The approach arms of vertical projection or bar type clasp are the only minor connectors that are not required to be rigid. So the first feature among this is that it need not to be rigid it, and it has some degree of flexibility as it is an approach arm. And third one the minor connector of this type approaches the tooth from an apical direction. Whereas all other uh, parts joined in an occlusal direction in this case uh, the minor connector is joining the abutment tooth in an apical direction and rather than an occlusal direction. The approach arm should display a smooth even taper from its origin to its terminus. And also the approach arm should be smooth and it should be tapered towards the terminus. So these are the main four features of the approach arm for vertical projection or bar type of clasp. With this, we conclude the minor connector. So basically, minor connector, minor connector is the connecting link between the components of the RPD to that of the major connector. And uh, the basic principles uh, we uh, we studied, uh, it should be rigid. It should support the underlying tissues and it should also support the processes. And uh, the four uh, types of minor connectors, first one to join the clasp assembly to the major connector, second one to join the indirect retainers to the major connector, third one to join the danger base to the major connector and fourth one to serve as an approach arm. Uh, so in detail about all the types we have studied and we have mentioned about the open lattice for construction, the mesh construction and uh, the bead wire or nail head construction and where all they are used in both open lattice construction and mesh construction are used for the distal extension cases and whereas the mesh construction is uh, limited to short span RPDs sorry uh, the bead or nail head construction is limited to the short span RPDs mm. 
other than that uh, we have learned about the approach arms where all it can be used uh, we have learned about the external and internal finish lines and about the cast tops for the distal extension cases the cast tops are used and basically for the open lattice work construction and for the mesh construction mesh construction they are used so with this we'll conclude the minor connectors